Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass, and I'm not sure if you're aware, but at the moment my daily driver is the iPhone 7 Plus. However, I use a ton of Google services from Google Keep to Gmail, so how does that work? Well, at the moment, there's 76 applications made by Google that work across any device running iOS, and that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Now, as well as me showing you how to use these applications, I'm also going to be showing you how you can get some Google services direct within the settings app on an iPhone itself to get things like contacts and calendar information. And the cross-platform between Google and iOS devices is one thing that I really enjoy. As you can see here, I've got a ton of Google applications running on my iPhone here at the moment, and I use most of them on a daily, regular basis. Now, that can't be said the same for Apple with going the other way onto Google platforms for Android, for example. Certain applications don't necessarily translate over <coughs> iMessage. So first things first, getting all your information over using the built-in settings in iOS. So you want to go into your settings, accounts and password, and then you've got the option to add a Google account or any other account that you need. And once you're done, you can use that to sync over things like email, contacts, calendars, and notes. For me though, I'm going to be using Gmail, Google Calendar, and Google Keep. So the only thing that I need at the moment is the contacts, as Google doesn't have a standalone application for that on iOS just at the moment. So just as an example here, I've re-downloaded Google Drive and it's going to have all my information pre-loaded. So once I go through the setup process, you're going to see that it's got all of my information ready from Google Drive ready to go and I don't have to re-log in or anything like that at all. Now some applications will ask you to actually click on your email address just to make sure it's you, but you don't need to actually double check or re-enter your password or anything. It's going to automatically log you in and give you access to everything that you need straight away. You can also add other accounts from within Google applications as well well as well as actually manage the accounts you've got so if you've got multiple accounts for different things then again you've got the option to change that or amend that within the application itself but as you can see here once everything's all logged in the application functions as normal Another great reason to use Google on iOS is for the handoff feature. So I've got my iMac just out of sight here at the moment, and if I go into Chrome on my device, you can see that I'm currently looking at Instagram at the moment on my iMac. Now I haven't got Safari open or anything like that, however if I go into multitasking, it's got an option for Safari from my iMac. Now if I click on this link, and I don't know how this works, it transfers what I'm looking at in Chrome over to Safari to allow the handoff feature to work seamlessly between my iOS device and also my Mac. Now initially I thought this only worked with specific Apple applications, however from the looks of it there's some sort of witchcraft going on between Google and also Chrome to allow this to work and transfer some information to Safari to allow that handoff feature. Now just to showcase some applications from Google that I use on a regular basis on my iPhone, the first of which being Google Drive. Now this is a really awesome application to keep track of everything that you need. For me, I use it for transferring thumbnails from my iPhone over to my Mac as I use most of my editing for my thumbnails with iOS applications. And it's just super simple to get everything transferred over to then start to upload over to YouTube. I've also got some information in regards to spreadsheet, tax information, everything of which is saved on there, super simple to use and you can also use the airdrop feature as well which is a really quick and convenient way to get files from your iPhone over to a Mac. And for those of you out there that always ask what wallpaper I'm using in a specific video, I've started to actually save and categorize my wallpapers so hopefully in the future if you do ask I'm going to have the wallpaper straight away ready for you. Next up then we have Google Keyboard or Gboard and this transfers all of the same features from Android over to iOS. So you've got the same theming options as well and one thing that I really like is you've got different ways of typing. So you can just type out the word that you need to. So for example if I just show it here right now I'm just going to type in test. Super simple, really easy to do. However you do also have the option of swiping as well which for me is super convenient with such a large phone like the iPhone 7 Plus. And if you need to, you can quickly switch back to the Apple keyboard and then back to Gboard again. But for me, although there are other applications like this in the App Store, like SwiftKey for example, this is the one that I've come to love and for me, it's the best keyboard application available for iOS. Now you can also use all of Google Home's features as well within iOS, super symbol here with the Google Home application. So you can do all the same things that you would normally be able to do and you've also got the option in the panel to the left hand side there to go to your devices and for me it's going to bring up my Google Home Mini. So again in terms of using that, setting it up, it all works seamlessly across iOS as well. 
which then leads us on nicely to the Google Assistant application, which again works exactly as it would do on Android. It still has the same conversational features as what you're going to find on Android as well. So again, if you do ask it a question, for instance, how old is Barack Obama, and then follow up with, and how old is his wife, it's going to then know what you're talking about, give you the information for Michelle Obama, and again, the conversational side of things is something that you can't necessarily beat on Android. Now, I have done a full video comparing Siri and Android with Google Assistant, and that is going to be linked in the description down below. So if you guys want a full in-depth tour, then that's where you're going to find it. Next up then we have YouTube, and last time I done a Google on iOS video, I was only able to actually stream in either 1080p or 720p, depending on the video that I was actually watching at the time. However, this has all changed now, allowing you to watch up to 1440p on your iPhone. Now, I know what you're wondering, how does that work when the display is sub 1080p? Well, it's actually quite clever, because what you're doing is you're squeezing in twice as many pixels on the same low resolution panel, it actually results in a finer quality video. Now, if you're not 100% sure what I'm talking about there, you may want to go ahead and Google super sampling to see exactly how that works. Now there are some limitations with iOS and Google. Now at the moment I've got Google Maps loaded here on my iPhone, however if I go ahead and ask Siri to get directions somewhere, it's not unfortunately going to work. Now it will still ask you where you want to actually go, and once you've specified your location, it's then going to get you directions to that specific place, but it's going to ask you to restore maps, and in this case it's going to be Apple Maps from the App Store. So until third party default applications come to iOS, you may have to keep some Apple applications on your device. Now even if you are deep in Apple's ecosystem, I would still recommend that everybody use Google Photos. For me, it's the best and easiest way to back up all of my photos to the cloud, and I actually pay for a little bit of extra storage to keep them in high resolution. So for me, this is the best and easiest way to get access to all of my photos, whether that's across my Mac, iPhone, or Android device. Now it also has the option to help you free up space. So once everything's all uploaded to the cloud, it's gonna then allow you to delete everything from your iPhone, as well as doing it from the deleted folder to free up as much space as possible. Now this next bit may sound strange but some applications such as motion stills actually come to iOS first and stay on that platform for a while before porting over to Android. Now that to me is a little bit strange but hey you know, you still get it best of both worlds. Now this application is great for creating GIFs and fun little videos as well, and it's really simple to use. So once you create your video, you then go into the editing side of things, so I'll allow you to add certain features and textures. So as you can see here, I've added some text, and I've also made it so that the text follows the object that's moving as well. So again, a really awesome application, super fun to use, and iOS had it first. And the last application is probably the one that I use most, and that is Snapseed from Google. This to me is the best editing software available on either iOS and Android. Now, it's not necessarily the best in terms of features and everything that it offers. However, in terms of ease of use, it is super simple to use. You swipe up to get to a different feature, swipe left or right to change the effect, and you've got a load of different things to choose from, whether that's adding blur, HDR, grain, and just in general editing your photos. If ever you see a photo of mine on Instagram, which again is linked in the description, most of the time I would have edited it first in Snapseed before then uploading it to Instagram. Now this isn't me saying that iOS is better than Android, I'm doing a completely separate video series on that which is coming very soon, but it is a great way to see how Google integrates with iOS. Now if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below, and if you've got any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section or on Twitter at Copper vs Glass. For more great content in the future, don't forget to subscribe. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass, and I will catch you guys in the next video.